So if you're trying to push customers to your own e-com site by making a certain subset of products only available on your e-com site or a lower price on your e-com site, that is ultimately just frustrating the customer. If they don't find a product on Amazon that they wanted to buy in the first place, maybe they're not going to bother going to your website to find it. This is the e-commerce brain trust, a podcast about building momentum online for established consumer brands. Join our hosts and their expert guests for high level conversations about e-commerce strategies, trends, and innovations. Access our brain trust and boost your brand's e-commerce potential. Hello and welcome back to the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I'm your host, Kiri Masters from Bobsled Marketing. And today is going to be a solo cast where I'm just going to share some recent news from the world of Amazon and the world of bobsled marketing. And we're going to get back to having some interviews in the coming weeks as well. But I did want to pop back on to make sure that you're all up to date with some recent developments at Amazon. It is a constant clip of change that we're dealing with in the world of Amazon. And there's no greater place of change than Amazon's advertising platform. And I just put a post up on Forbes yesterday about a new type of ad placement that is rumored to be coming to Amazon AMS pretty soon. And that is mobile video ads. And the way this will work is when you're searching for a search term, a video ad will display in search results alongside sponsored product ad listings and organic search results. So this is really new for Amazon. I mean, video ads are not new. We see them on Facebook all the time. We see them on Instagram all the time. But video ads are new for Amazon, especially to be displaying natively in the search results. This is quite groundbreaking. So this will be pretty interest, an interesting way to explain the features and benefits of products. The video is able to cover so much more ground in terms of demonstrating the product and showing how it's supposed to be used, showing what the, the outcome of, of using the product is. So it's a really rich way of selling a product that goes so much more beyond the text ads that we essentially have access to in paid search on Amazon. The other really interesting thing here is these ad placements are not going to be made available on Amazon DSP or their demand side platform. They are going to be made available to advertisers through AMS, which is the performance marketing platform of Amazon. This is a pretty interesting move because with this kind of ad type, we're talking about a CPM type of metric cost per mille or like the number of people or views that an ad has had, a number of impressions, those kind of metrics, rather than a pay per click or cost per click type of bidding, which is what we're all familiar with on performance marketing ad platforms like AMS. So this is a pretty interesting move. And I think what it tells us is Amazon's advertising ambitions are huge. This is an enormous opportunity for Amazon to capitalize on their shoppers and their, the traffic to their site and the loyalty that people have to the Prime program. And they've just got this very, very attractive audience from an advertiser's standpoint. And once they've turned on the tap to bring ad dollars in, there are just so many different ways that they can monetize search, monetize their network of sites beyond just amazon.com, but we've also got the mobile, IMDB, other proprietary sites that they have. So this is just one way that Amazon's able to bring a new ad type that is really compelling for brands and make it available to thousands and thousands of advertisers rather than kind of locking it up in the DSP, which still has really limited access. You can only access DSP if you're a really large brand or if you work with an agency like Bobsled Marketing where we have access to the DSP. So DSP is out of reach for 
a lot of brands on the smaller side. And also just given the priorities of smaller brands, they often don't have a brand marketing budget. With DSP, we're talking about brands that have a brand marketing budget. They are interested in impressions. They're interested in awareness. They're interested in brand recall, those kind of metrics, which are less important to a smaller brand who's really focused on getting sales and being able to tie their ad spend directly back to sales. So the fact that Amazon's made this ad type available on AMS, I find very interesting. They obviously want to get as much adoption of this ad type as possible. Having said that, it's still probably going to be out of reach for a lot of smaller brands, given that producing a video is very expensive, you know, a decent video. So there's the cost of production up front. And then according to the article in Bloomberg, which I referenced in my article, there is a $35,000 minimum spend in the first 60 days for this ad type. So that will be out of reach of smaller brands for sure when you couple that with the production expense. But I like the fact that they've at least made this available to brand, uh, smaller brands operating on AMS. Okay, my next news item for the week was a study that came out from Feedvisor, which is a software provider for marketplace sellers. And they've been doing some really interesting research lately. This most recent one was a study of 2000 consumers asking them about their online shopping behavior. And again, there was a, this is based off a post I put up on Forbes that we'll link to in the show notes here. One of the headlines from the study is 89% of consumers are more likely to buy products from Amazon than other e-commerce sites. So that is 89% of shoppers want to go to Amazon rather than an e-commerce site that they don't frequently visit. That includes eBay, Walmart, and independent direct-to-consumer sites like Glossier, I mentioned as one example. But this creates a very compelling reason for brands to put Amazon f- first as a sales and marketing channel. I talk with a lot of brands who are interested in preserving their direct-to-consumer e-commerce channel for very good reasons. Often you're getting better margin on those sales. You have a direct relationship with the customer so you can remarket to them. You can actually speak to them. With Amazon, you don't have any direct relationship to the customer. It's Amazon's customer. So of course, all of the things being equal, you would rather have sales come through your e-com website than on Amazon totally get that. But customers, many shoppers don't want to buy on another website besides Amazon. Amazon has my credit card information. They have my shipping address. They have my order history. So I can go back and buy that product that I I liked from three months ago that I need to replenish. There is so much trust in Amazon as a payment company, someone who understands my preferences of somewhere that I know that I'm going to be able to generally get a pretty good price for what I'm looking for. And I know how to navigate the site. Call Amazon's website design what you want, but it is a conversion machine. It's very easy to navigate around. It's very easy to know how to search, how to go through products. So if you're trying to push customers to your own e-com site by making a certain subset of products only available on your e-com site or a lower price on your e-com site, that is ultimately just frustrating the customer. If they don't find a product on Amazon that they wanted to buy in the first place, maybe they're not going to bother going to your website to find it. Maybe they're going to be wooed by one of your competitors who's really actively bidding on your brand's keywords on Amazon. So I think that the idea of trying to steal sales from Amazon and have those sales occur in a different channel is a bit of a fool's bargain in a lot of ways. And this data point just sort of helped me get a little bit higher on my pedestal on this topic. Sorry if I'm beating everyone over the head with it, but I feel very strongly that you shouldn't frustrate an Amazon customer and and try and get in their way of buying something from your brand just because 
of the channel economics. On a related note with channel economics, there was some news last week, in case you didn't catch this one, where Amazon changed the wording in their policy around what is called in the industry, I guess, most favored nation pricing. And this meant that in their terms of service, Amazon actually required brands to offer their best price for a product on Amazon. So you technically couldn't put your products for at a lower cost on your website than you did on Amazon. And that was literally written into the terms of service. That term got removed last week. And so there was some speculation about, well, do, is this does this actually change the game or is Amazon still going to enforce this most favoured nation pricing, not through a policy, but through suppressing the buy box for those brands? And what that looks like is you're a brand selling a product, you're the only seller of that product, or maybe you're the vendor and you're the only entity listing that product on Amazon and you st there's still no buy box on the page. So customers can't click that add to cart button right away. They have to click through to a separate page to add the product to their cart and, and see the pricing in some cases. You're also not able to run pay-per-click advertising for those products that don't have a buy box. And so this suppressed buy box was happening while that rule was in place. And anecdotally, what I've been hearing from, from sellers and, and vendors is that that's still happening even after the official policy was walked back. So even though the policy has changed, maybe in practice, not a whole lot has, but that is sort of lines up with my earlier point about channels and where customers are going to buy products. You, you need to offer the same price in all channels. That I'd appreciate that has financial implications for a lot of brands where the economics are very different between channels. But looking at it from a customer standpoint, that's what they want. They want the convenience of Amazon. They still want to shop for your brand. But they want to make the transaction on Amazon. A couple of other data points from this study that are really interesting. Amazon is indispensable throughout the shopping journey. And so there were a few questions that were asked of customers in this shoppers in this Feedvisor survey that asked, where do you start your search? for new products. And 66% of the time people are searching, starting their search for products on Amazon compared to 20% who start on a search engine like Google. So 66% of the time people are starting their search for a new product on Amazon versus just 20 for Google. And that's fascinating. When customers are ready to actually buy a specific product, 74% go directly to Amazon. So three quarters of customers, once they know what they want to buy, what brand, they're going to go to Amazon. That is incredible. And one more data point to demonstrate Amazon's sort of grip on the customer journey as well. This is kind of the consideration phase where I might be trying to, looking for some Bluetooth headphones and I'm trying to decide between two brands. I'm going to go to Amazon and check out the reviews of those two products. So where customers check reviews before making a purchase, 79% check reviews on Amazon. And the next option is 32% for a search engine. So people are using Amazon to search for a new product they're using it during the consideration phase, comparing one brand to another. They're also comparing pricing a lot on Amazon. And then when they actually want to buy the product, they're checking out on Amazon. So <laughs> this kind of reinforces the need for you to be very proactive with your content on Amazon. Make sure it's not only optimized for search, for people to actually find it when they're searching for your product, but also that the content is really good that it's telling the story of the, the brand, the product features, you're using images, you're using comparison tables if you need to, you're adding enough content in there to help people make a buying decision because that's where people are going to research, compare and purchase. So I think 
in the past, a lot of brands looked at Amazon as a distribution channel, that this is the way we get product into the hands of our shoppers. But now Amazon's also a marketing channel and you kind of need to be active on Amazon because that's where people are, are doing research, where they're doing their comparison. So I always like to talk about Amazon as a marketing and distribution channel for brands. And then the final takeaway from this report, this is a heartening takeaway. Customers are looking for recognizable brands on Amazon. So brands are still important. And I really want to bring this home, especially in an era where everyone's so concerned about Amazon private label brands, which is a great topic we'll definitely cover on a future episode because I don't think that they are, at least right now, they're not the threat that a lot of brands imagine them to be. But brands are still important for customers looking for recognizable names and a marker of quality. That's what a brand is. It's a mark and it is supposed to signal something to the customer about quality. So I think that brands are even more important today. Whenever I go on Amazon as a shopper, I just see bucket loads of unidentifiable crap, basically. Things that I, I'm like, is that brand going to be around in three months if I have a problem with that product? Are they going <laughs> to still be in business, still selling on Amazon? There's a lot of junk on Amazon, to be honest. And so as a consumer, when I'm looking to make a convenient and reliable purchase, I'm searching for brands. And I think this study reflects that as well. They found that nearly three quarters of consumers cited brand name as an important factor when selecting a product. And 59% of high volume daily shoppers, so there are actually a big chunk of people that shop on Amazon daily, 59% of those cited brand name as a very important factor when selecting a product. So I think brands are still important. Branding is still an important exercise and that the goodwill that you have through your brand is a, is a factor that shoppers are looking for when they're doing their search on Amazon. So one other news item before we go, there was a really great introduction to DSP article that my colleague Will Hare at Bobsled Marketing put together for our blog last week. And with all of the, was just talking about DSP versus AMS. If this is a new concept to you and you want to learn more about Amazon's branding capabilities for advertisers and the different ways that you can segment audiences on Amazon, like tech savvy baby boomers and new moms and people that are shoppers that are going to fit your buy a profile on Amazon are able to be reached through the DSP. So it's a very interesting opportunity for brands who are looking at expansion and more brand awareness. So Will did a great piece about DSP, what it is, how it works, different targeting options, kind of a primer on DSP. And that's up at our blog at Bobsled Marketing published last week. So I hope you enjoyed this sort of newsy episode. We're going to get back to some interviews with brands and people working at Bobsled on all of the weird and wonderful things that crop up on Amazon. So we'll get back to that next week. And if you haven't subscribed to this show on iTunes or wherever you listen, please go ahead and do that. And then you'll get notified of every new episode as it comes out. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you next week.